Hello everyone and welcome to the satisfactory tutorial. So today we're going to be working on a setup to make reinforced iron plates. And this setup is going to be very, very compact and it should fit into a lot of different areas because of how compact it will be. Now we do know with reinforced iron plates, we do need a couple different things. We need one screws and two plates. Okay, so to start, we need two separate rooms. We need a three by three room for our iron plate, but then we also need a three by four room for our screws. And the three by four, it needs to be three blocks deep by four blocks long. Now, one very important thing to notice here is we do need both entrances of our oars to be on the right or left side of the room. So here we're coming in on the far right of each room, but you can also mirror this if you need to and come in on the left. But it is very important for those two items to be on the same side with where they're coming in in each respective room. Now let's get started in the iron room. So to get started, what we need to do is go to our inventory and we need to get two smelters. So our smelters, we want to come in towards our entrance with the iron. So what we want to do is have this come all the way out. We need to go all the way to the back wall and we want to make sure that we're right up against the far side wall as well. What we need to do is come one block out away from the back wall. Your next smelter needs to be right next to it, but then come back one towards our entrance with the ore. Next, what you want to do is take out a constructor and you want to put the entrance into the constructor towards the backside wall with where we're coming out of the smelters. And what you want to do is have this be one away from the back wall as well. So you'll notice it's red, become one, then two in total from the red to where we actually want it placed. So it should look something similar to this. Next, what you want to do is take your constructor. Your constructor is going to go all the way up against your left side wall. Okay, so right here. And we actually might need to move it in one because it's kind of deceiving with these new glass walls. Sometimes it actually allows you to build the inside of it. So a safe way to make sure you're placing this correctly is just put a normal wall there next to it. So that's what I'm going to do just to make sure that we're getting this in the correct spot. So get our second constructor. We want this entrance into the constructor to be actually on the far side wall over here. What we want to do is have this all the way up against the wall on the left. Okay, and then one away from the wall on the back. So it should look something just like this. Now we want to do take your conveyor pole. This conveyor pole is right next to the constructor that we just placed. It's going to go almost like right in between where this divot is in the wall. We're going to bring it up one. Come to the back here. This conveyor pole is actually going to be right next to this constructor. Like right against the edge and then up one. Then what you want to do taking your conveyor. We want to come out of this constructor. Come out 90 come out to where we're going to be even with our smelter, but then come back to so one, two towards our constructor, connect the two. So it's a perfect 90. And the reason we're doing that is just to get a perfect 90. Next, taking your other conveyor pole, put one right next to the 90 we just placed. Now what we can do is connect this conveyor pole with the other one that we placed earlier, and then connect that with the first one we placed. And then you can connect that constructor to that conveyor. And then we're all good to go. Another thing you will need is logistics. You will need a conveyor splitter. So your conveyor splitter, you actually want to be in line with where we're coming in with our iron. And it should be even with our first smelter here. And then for placement, you want it to be almost as close as you can get to your smelter. Not to where it's inside of it, but just outside of it. And then connect the two. And then connect this output to the other smelter as well. So it will come in and connect. Now what we do is just connect those two like this by using the outside wall and connecting the splitter so we can connect our two smelters. So we're almost done. Next, what you want to do, take your conveyor pole and what you want to do is right on the edge of these two foundations, right where our iron is coming in, what we want to do is put a conveyor pole here, right on like in the middle of this section, not in the middle, but like one or two over. Do the same thing on the other side. So pretty much mirror it. Connect this constructor to the one closest to the wall. And then you want to take out another conveyor pole. And here's where it actually didn't work. If you tried doing my other design for a three by three room, this doesn't work now because of, you know, the new setups that they have and boundaries for the conveyance um, against equipment. So what we want to do is have this one be like right up against the nearest constructor, but then have it come out too. And then come out, connect the two together, and then bring this out to where it's just past the boundary. Cause then we connect that one with that conveyor pole and we're good to go. All right. 
So now we need to go do our iron or screw setup, not our iron, our screw. So the screw setup is actually very, very simple. The reason why we need a four by three is we need a lot more room to get two lines of screws being made. So what we're gonna do is you will need four constructors for this if we go to production and we wanna get four constructors. So the way this is gonna work is you want your input to face on the right side of the wall. If you wanna mirror this, you can as well, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video. What we wanna do is kinda of similar to what we've been doing, one away from the wall. So one, make sure we're all the way up against the back and then connect it. Not connect it, but just place it. This one will butt up right against it. And then we wanna put another one right up against this one and make those in line. So it should be the exact same setup, just one place to the other. You can connect those two with conveyance just like this perfect now what you will need is a smelter now the smelter surprisingly does not matter where you place it but the only thing that matters is that you want to make sure it's in line with where we're coming in with our iron and then you can put it on any of these blocks if you want now i would leave some space here on this third block and you'll see why here in a second because we could even push this back slightly more which i might do uh, if we get our smelter i'm going to push this back slightly to where it's right here, which should work just fine. What you will need is another splitter. So if we go to logistics and then splitter, what you wanna do is put this one, kind of what we did with the iron setup, pretty close as we can get to our constructor. So just like that, you can connect. If it will let me, there we go, connect those two. And then this one connects to that one. And then what you do, very, very simple, is just come out of your smelter and then one, two, and then we connect into the splitter. And now we have that set up. So now it would come in, we can connect just like that, and we're good to go. So then we need to do a couple more things to get the screw set up finished. What we need to do is take conveyor poles. You need to put one right here on the edge, almost like what we did before, but this one's gonna go in the middle, not on the edge. And this one's gonna go right next to it, just like that. So what you're gonna do is your nearest constructor, you're actually gonna have it come out and go to this one here. Now that might seem weird, but these aren't gonna be perfect 90s because we don't have the room for it. This next one, you actually wanna get your conveyor pole and go into the bend you just did and move it up one. And you'll know if you got it in the correct spot because you should be able to connect these two together at an angle just like this, okay? And then we get rid of that pole because we don't like clashing stuff. And then what I'm gonna do is put another pole here. We come out of this constructor and then we just connect those two pieces of conveyor that we had here. And now what we wanna do is, now that you have that stuff completed, you wanna actually take our foundations eight by two and then fill in the entire ceiling besides where we're coming up with our elevators, okay? So that's what you wanna do. I already did that, but then we need to go upstairs now. Okay, so we are upstairs now on top of our eight by two foundations. Now what we need to do is actually take out our conveyor lifts. Now if you wanna use the Mark one, Mark two, Mark three, do whatever you need to at your discretion of what you think your, you know, your plant needs. What we're gonna do is just connect our conveyor poles that we have down low already and just bring these up. These two will be right next to each other. And actually we might need to bring this one in a little bit farther. So what I'm gonna do is just put this one one more over and then i just need to connect that conveyor that we have just like that move our conveyor lift up bring it up and they should be side by side just like that very very cool now we can go over to our screw setup now the screw setup you'll notice is going to be a little bit different our first one closest to us we actually want to bring up okay and then it's at our normal height but the second one you'll notice is behind we can't do that you actually want to bring it up one above, just like this. So, I know it looks kind of weird, but there is a purpose for this layout. Now, what you want to do is you will need four different assemblers, so four separate assemblers. The way you're going to place these is you want them facing towards your elevators, and pretty much the placement of this is actually very, very simple, and it's actually very important that you follow this step, because otherwise the setup might not work. So, you notice the white boundary box around our you know assembler what you want to do is put this first one to where it's like right at the edge on the right side of our um of our foundation so right next to it but then what you want to do is you see the closest boundary box to us the white line is like right over the foundation line we need to bring that back one so it should look something just like this okay 
And then once you get that place, now is very, very simple. The first one's the most important one to get placed, but after that, we just put the other ones next to it. So one, and then we, so we have three now, and then we put the fourth one. And you'll know if you did this correctly because they should all be on the foundation, so they should be symmetrical from side to side. Now we got that done, now we just got to work on the next part. So the next part, we will need to go to our logistics. And again, this is very, very simple. Nothing should be too, you know, insane here. And we actually want to start with our screws. The screws are going to be one of the more important parts that we want to make sure we get correct. So logistics, we want to go to our conveyor splitter. Your conveyor splitter, you want to actually be facing in towards where your screws are coming from. And you want it to be in line with this first inlet to our assembler. Bring the splitter all the way down to the wall. So it should be right up against it. Connect these first two. Did I? Oh, I didn't place the in feed the correct way. So there we go. We want it coming this way. Make sure we're in line. Just like that. We want to connect this first one. Now what we want to do is then take this one, come all the way to your other inlet of your smelter. Or excuse me, assembler. And then one, two. And then connect those two just like that. All right. So next, what you need to do is kind of do with the same thing that you just did with your um, conveyor splitter. So same setup here, just going to the other two assemblers on the far side. So we can do same inlet, you know, facing towards where we're coming in from. And then just make sure we're in line all the way up against the wall. Again, very same setup here. And then we just want to make sure we're in line here. One, two. Now to connect this splitter to our other conveyor... You might have guessed this already. We're going to use a conveyor pole. I'm just going to put this conveyor pole here. And then we just connect these two just like that. Now your screws are all set up. Now we just need to get our plates over to these other ones to get those done. So to do that, you also need more splitters. Make sure your splitter is facing towards the inlet of where your plates are coming from. And what you're going to do is put this first one right next to... I need to get off the conveyor because I'm moving. So we want to put it right here. So I know we're very, very close to our assembler, but that's fine in this new update, so we should be good to go. Now what you need to do, take your conveyor pole, because we don't want to have clashing conveyor. So what we want to do is take your conveyor pole, and just on the other side of this screw conveyance, move it up one. And then come out of your splitter from your plates, and then you can disconnect the two like that. And then we're going to pretty much do the same thing with our other line. So again, take out your conveyor splitter. You want to have it inlet this way. Take your conveyor pole on the other side of that conveyance, just like what we did on the other side. Connect the two. Make sure we might need to get over. Eh. Get over to this side. Get that placed. And then just connect it to your other assembler. Uh, oh, I was on the ladder. I was like, what is moving me up and down? Okay, so then what we need to do is taking our conveyor pole stackables. What I'm going to do is put the conveyor pole stackable here in line with this ladder on the second um, assembler and then just connect your conveyance and then we need another conveyor pole which I'm gonna put right here in line with this um, conveyor pole on the ground and then we just connect the two together just like this all right and then we just connect this one to that and we're all good to go and if you don't like how that's coming out of a gradual incline if you want you can even put another one Maybe even right here in line and then to connect the two. So it really depends on personal preference on how you think you want to make it look. But now we got that done. What we need to do is take more 8x2 foundations. And this doesn't matter which side you have a opening on. If you want to have it on the far left side, if you want to have it on the far right, it doesn't exactly matter. But what you want to do is leave one opening on the back side in any back corner Um Again, it doesn't matter which side. Now, what you're going to do, taking conveyor mergers, because we can do this because these do not have a massive, you know, amount coming out of each assembler. What we want to do is pretty much put these right up against the out feed of our assemblers, our discharge. So, conveyor merger. So, we want to make sure we're all coming out the right way. So, we want them all facing the same way. And I know this looks like we're really close to these... Um, assemblers but the advantage is with this new update we can get a lot closer and still connect all these items you know coming out of the assemblers which is a fantastic thing and then we connect that one and then what you're gonna do 
is I'm gonna put a conveyor pole here in the middle of this foundation, connect it with conveyor. And then what you're gonna do is go up to your third floor and then connect this to another conveyor so we can store all these items. Okay, so we're up here on the third floor. So what I just said is gonna be true of just take your conveyor lift. And then I usually just have this be a Mark One just cause you're transporting to a storage room. If you're gonna uh, transport this directly to another machine, then you might want this to be a little bit separate, but we can cover that in another video. And then just connect these two with however you wanna set up your storage room. So it depends on the size of your building, but I did mine just like this. So I have one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three on this side. And pretty much the way that it works is it just keeps splitting these into the splitter and then each, you know, into their own storage container. But yeah, that's pretty much the setup, guys. I think it's really clean. It's very, very compact, especially when you look at it from this other point of view. We're very, very compact here. We're not wasting any block or any space. The only spaces that aren't being used are the ones on the very end, and that's only because we can't fit any equipment there. So yeah, you know, hopefully this video helps you guys out with a very, very compact, you know, iron, uh, was iron plate manufacturing. So yeah, thank you for watching, guys. It is greatly appreciated, and I will see you guys for the next video. Bye-bye.